Time travel is not a work of science fiction. In fact, people time travel all the time. We can go into the past to relive past experiences and then also fast forward into the future to anticipate others. Our minds let us wander around as much as we want and so the question isn't whether time travel is possible. The question is how do we stop jumping through time and instead focus in the present moment. How's it going everyone? Hope you're having a wonderful day today. I'm not. I'm a little bit sunburnt. My name is Frank. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about different ways in which we can optimize our lives for productivity, financial independence, and happiness. Now, even though I am by no means an expert on meditation or yoga or mindfulness or anything at all really, I just wanted to share a few things that keep me grounded in the moment instead of being physically present but mentally somewhere else. So let's get started. Looking back into the past can be a wonderful experience. We can relive amazing moments that we've had in our lives. We can also take a look at dark moments to fully process them and fully understand our emotions. I think there's a lot we can learn from our mistakes and successes in the past. Our wisdom is really just the accumulation of our experiences as we move throughout life. And so looking into the past is not necessarily a bad thing. There's a lot of things we can learn. And in fact, as they say, hindsight is 2020. Looking into the future is also not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I think it's very, very important to have a destination in mind before moving forwards, even if that destination is not super clear. Personally, I don't really know exactly where I would like to be in 10 years time, but I do have a general idea of what I would like to be doing. So that in and of itself helps me plan concrete steps to go in that general direction. I think it's very important to look into the future with this mindset because ultimately that helps us eventually get to self-fulfillment and success. The issue with looking backwards or forwards too intensely is that it's actually quite easy to lose track of the present moment. If you stare into the past too deeply, it's very, very tempting to get caught in a loop of nostalgia. And if you're caught in this loop, all you're really thinking about are past things that have already happened. And so this makes it very difficult to come back into the present and see things that are currently happening with any clarity. Likewise, if we spend too much time thinking about the future and imagining how things will play out, we run into a similar problem where we kind of lose track of the present moment and things that should be noticeable to us aren't as noticeable. So we can't change the past because it's already happened and we can't predict the future with any amount of certainty because it requires a lot of assumptions. The only place we really hold any power is in the present moment. So how do we keep our hyperactive minds from wandering around? My first tip is to seek discomfort and this really isn't as bad as it sounds. It's just to cause your body a little bit of stress, for example, by having a cold shower. I think hot showers can be very, very relaxing, maybe too relaxing to the point where it's very easy for your mind to just wander off and do as it pleases. But with cold showers, my personal theory on why they're promoted a lot in like the self-development or productivity spaces is that it literally just shocks you out of your own head. So it prevents you from overthinking. Another activity that causes your body just a little bit of stress and is actually healthier than cold showers is exercise. And this can be anything from just walking around the block to lifting weights, to maybe doing some virtual reality cardio, which by the way, is my favorite form of cardio. Putting your body under stress of some sort, be it a cold shower or exercise, is a great way to stop yourself from overthinking because it makes you physically aware of what is going on with yourself. And so doing one of these activities even once a day is enough to sort of break that overthinking loop. At least it is for me and I am a chronic overthinker. Next up is to be aware of the been there, done that effect. And while I'm sure there's an official name for this term, I just like the catchiness of been there, done that. So I'm gonna roll with it. This effect happens when you've done something so many times that you don't really need to be consciously aware of what you're doing. And so your mind tends to wonder while you're doing that thing. A great example of this is like driving the same route home from work a million times. The first time you drove home from work, you were very aware of where you were driving and what you were doing. But by like the hundredth time, you just kind of teleport home from work. And it's really crazy how that happens. And you know, that's fine if you don't notice the drive home. Sometimes it's nice to just let your mind wander off and do as it pleases. But it's not so great if you've been constantly overthinking about something and find it hard to come back to the present. And so my recommendation to you then would be to, first of all, be aware of the been there, done that effect. And second of all, to try to look around your environment as if it were the first time you were seeing it. There's a lot of times that we've seen something so many times that it sort of loses its wonder and beauty. There's the only just make you want to cry. I've never known this man. But that doesn't mean we can't learn to appreciate things again as if it were the first time. Marie, what? Are you doing? Is that 
ceiling ever made you want to cry. So next time you see your house again, or perhaps you meet up with a loved one, or take a glance around your neighborhood, try to look at it as if you were seeing it for a second first time. I 100% guarantee you it'll make you feel a lot more present and you might even be very thankful. My third tip is to use your body's senses and systems to bring yourself out of your own head. And by far the most common way to do this is to just focus on your breathing. I'm very, very fond of doing this because it really makes you aware of things that are happening around you and it helps you calm down, especially in times of high anxiety. For example, for me, having to go number two somewhere that isn't my house. A different way to use your body to keep yourself focused is by playing around with your senses. They can be very, very useful to anchoring you to your current environment if you're willing to experiment just a little bit. Lighting a candle or incense can make an empty room feel more vibrant and cheerful. Another way to do this is by experimenting with the lighting in your room, which can make the mood feel very, very different. And finally, this one might be a little bit weird, but for me, I'm very receptive to touch and textures of things. So for example, the stitching on the back of my steering wheel helped me feel very centered and focused while I'm driving, and the cracks on the back of my iPhone, which I refuse to get a cover for, help me bring myself out of my own head. My final tip is that good sleep goes a very, very long way. Personally, I can't stand that feeling of like waking up groggy in the morning because you didn't get a good night's sleep. And that's because for me, the whole day is ruined. I, I literally can't focus when that happens to me. And then I spend the entire day fuming about why I stayed up all night doing whatever thing I was doing because it was definitely not worth compromising my sleep on. The solution to this is actually pretty simple. Just optimize your sleep environment as much as you can. Try to have as little lighting as possible. Make the room a nice something like 66 degrees. I personally like it very, very cold and don't have energy drinks or caffeine past 6 p.m. By doing all of these things, you should get a very good quality sleep and then in the morning you won't feel groggy and just hate yourself and have to drink an illegal amount of caffeine to just even feel a little bit focused throughout the day. So those are a few things in my present life that I do to try to keep myself anchored and not time travel all day long. I hope some of these have been useful to you and hopefully you have some ideas from this video. If you like this general wellness vibe, I did try to find the meaning of happiness in a video, which I will link somewhere up above. Do make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.